Hello everyone, in this video we're going to talk about Animals Part 2. Animals Part 2 starts with the Cambrian explosion where a lot of different kinds of multicellular organisms showed up for the first time. And these multicellular organisms have specialized cells, which means they are cells with a very specific function. They have tissues, organs, body symmetry, so you can think about um, animals with no body symmetry. Um, bilateral symmetry and radial symmetry. So if you think about a starfish that kind of shoots out from the middle and then in all the direction of the body, they all look the same. That is the um, radial symmetry. And human beings are bilateral symmetry, which means you can look at the middle line of this organism and both sides will look the same. And there's also segmentation where um, if you think about a spider, there are different, uh, different parts of its body, right? If you think about an ant, well, a lot of the insects have different segments of the body, that's segmentation. A front and a back end, so for us, we have the front end and the back end, and then we have appendages, such as our arms. Um, uh, here's a cladogram of the non-chordate invertebrates. If you think about non-chordates, those are the ones without spines, so those are invertebrates, and this these organisms do not form a clade. So we spend a good amount of time talking about what is a clade, what is not a clade. A clade is when a common ancestor and all the descendants is involved in that group. So for example, if I were to draw a circle like this, right here, if I were to draw a circle like this, this will be called a clade because there's a common ancestor and all the descendants. However, if we're looking at non-chordates, which is all of these organisms except this one, it will not be called a clade because we have the common ancestor, but not all of not all the descendants are in this group. Okay, and then, however, cladograms of a chordate, this is a clade because we do have the common ancestor and all the descendants. And you need to know how to read a cladogram. So, for example, if I were to ask you uh, what is an organism that's the most closely related to the salamanders, that will be the frogs and the toads because they meet up right here. This is the most recent common ancestor of these two organisms. If we draw a timeline, um, it will go from the bottom of the tree to the tip of the tree. It will go like this. And as you can see, these this common ancestor falls on the timeline to the most recent part. Okay, And then birds will be the most closely related to crocodiles from this cladogram and birds and crocodiles and lizards and snakes and twat. <laughs> <laughs> that, the other word, they all um, are equally as related because they have a common ancestor right here. I hope that makes sense. The next one that we want to talk about is uh, kind of the developmental process of, of marine animals to land animals. So the marine animals, obviously, they have the fin, but they actually have a very similar bone structures as land animals. And then there's a, an organism is kind of in between the marine and the, the land. Um, it's called tiktalic. They have a, a stronger bones, they have stronger bones that allow them to kind of crawl on land. Um, now we want to talk about some characteristics of different types of animals. Um, so we start with fish. Fish have fins, obviously, it's pretty easy. Just if, I, if you see a question on the test about, you know, what does fish have? Just imagine a fish in your head and think about um, what do they have? They have fins, right, to help them swim. You got to think about what the, the function of each characteristic is as well. They have scales, so the scales allow um, the fish to move around more freely in the ocean. That's one thing. Um, it allows them to have colors to attract mates, for example. Um, the, the color of the scales could also potentially uh, scare off predators. Um, it can also protect the fish, right, so they're not as easily hurt in, in the ocean. And the fish also have gills that allows them to take in oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. So the whole gas exchange thing, right? The reason why it's called, called gas exchange is because as oxygen is coming into the body, carbon dioxide has to go out. So how it works is, is that a fish has to open his mouth and allow water to come in, which has dissolved oxygen, meaning that oxygen is already mixed up in the water. And then as this water flows from the mouth out and then out from the gill, um, these little, um, op these little hair-like structures will be able to um, pick up the oxygen in the bloodstream inside these hair-like structures. The next one is the amphibians. The amphibians develop lungs to allow breathing. So if you think about it, um, fish can breathe using their scales, using their, they're using their gills because they're in the ocean, right? They can actually open and close the operculum and uh, that works for them and they're already picking up dissolved oxygen. However, when animal comes on land, 
they can no longer use scales, uh, use gills because they cannot open and close the operculum. And they, um, we also don't have dissolved oxygen in the air, but oxygen can only be taken in if it's already, you know, dissolved in water. So how it works is that amphibians now develop lungs, right? They're kind of the first step as uh, fish come onto land. They develop lungs to allow breathing, but they also have very moist skin with mucus gland to keep the entire body kind of wet to allow the oxygen to dissolve into the skin. So amphibians breathe both using the lungs and using the skins. And they don't have scales because in order to breathe in the oxygen, um, they can't, you know, if you have scales, then this is not gonna quite work so well with breathing using the skin. And then they also have claws. The next one is reptiles. So you should know that reptiles have dry, scaly skin because the most challenging thing challenging thing about being on land is losing water, both for plants and animals. Losing water is really, really easy, and the animals have to develop a way to, um, to resist the water from being um, evaporating too fast. So reptiles have dry, scaly skin, the dry part, right, because they don't, they don't need to breathe through the skin. Is the scale kind of prevents the water from going out of the body um, as easily. And they have a well-developed lung because now they have to fully depend on the lung to breathe in the oxygen and get rid of the carbon dioxide. They have very strong limbs because they have to crawl around on land. They have shelled eggs because um, this also preserves the water inside the egg so that the embryo can develop. And the shelled egg also has a lot of nutrients inside, right? The reason why we eat eggs is because there's a lot of nutrients, good for us. Um, but the, the shelled eggs produced by reptiles um, is, has the nutrients and water and the embryo inside. Um, so, so it all works out, works out pretty well. That do not develop in water. So for um, amphibians and for fish, they all lay their eggs in water um, because, well, they don't really need to have an egg because they... Uh, because the water allows the embryo to grow, right? If if these amphibians, uh, if the reptiles lay, just lay an egg on land, it will quickly dry out and this embryo is not going to survive. Um, that's it for this one. And then the next one is birds are endotherms. I have to correct this right now. Birds are endotherms. And then this one is endotherms. So what are endotherms? Endotherms are organisms that regulate its own body temperature. So if you think about endo is inside, inside, therm is temperature, right? Inside temperature means you produce a lot of body heat inside your body. Um, so those are birds and as well as us, mammals are also endotherms. We produce our own body heat. If you're an ectotherm, that means you will be um, a cold-blooded animal, but cold-blooded animals still produce a little bit of body heat for themselves. It's just not as much. They have to depend on the outside environment. So ecto is outside, right? Therm is temperature. So their temperature is regulated um, with the environment. And the mammals also produce, uh, produce milk to nourish the young. And they also have hair. Mammals breathe air and have four timbered hearts. So make sure you know all of this. Lastly, we have the primates that have long fingers with nails instead of claws uh, because they need to climb around. Um, they have arms that can rotate around the shoulder joint a strong clavicle, a binocular vision, and a well-developed cerebrum, which is a part of your brain. Okay, so let's take a look at the review question and see if we can answer all of it. Um, okay, what happened during the Cambrian explosion? A lot of new species of animals appeared. Did the earliest type of animals have bones? No. Were they able to form fossils? No, because, okay, so this was not addressed. So the earliest, the earliest type of animals are kind of soft, they have a lot of soft parts, and they, right, think about invertebrates, right? If they are invertebrates, they don't have bones, and without having bones, those cells are going to um, disappear pretty quickly after the animal dies, so they're not able to form fossils very easily. Some still can, but um, most of those animals cannot form fossils. What are some characteristics of fish? Um, what is it used to breed? You already know that. What are some characteristics of amphibians? Do their eggs? Okay. Okay, so uh, fish, just real quick, they have gills, they have, um, uh, they have scale, they have, what's the one last thing? Can't remember. Uh, fins, obviously fins. 
right? What does it use to breathe the, the gills? Characteristic of Tendius, um, well, the, the whole thing that we already talked about. What does it use to breathe? They use the lung and the skin. Does it have scales and claws? Um, they do not. Do their eggs have shells? They do not. What are some characteristics of reptiles? Do, what do they use to breathe? They use a well-developed lung. Do their eggs have shells? Yes. Are birds endotherms or ectotherms? Endotherms. Difference between endotherm and ectotherm. One is warm-blooded animal, cold-blooded animal, makes body heat, makes a lot of body heat and regulates body heat at a certain temperature. Uh, doesn't. Cold-blooded animals. Are mammals endotherm or ectotherm? Endotherms. Do they produce milk? Yes. Characteristics of primates. We all uh, talk about it. All right. Good luck for studying.